Hello karibu endelee kujifunza na hapa tuangalia maana ya maneno kadhaa. Na tutakuwa tunaona maana ya kila neno kupitia sentence tulizonazo hapa. Kwa kila sentence moja itatupa maana angalau ya neno moja miongoni mwa maneno yaliyoko hapa. Na maneno yetu tulionayo ni haya hapa. Neno la kwanza ni employment. Employment. Neno la pili ni unemployment. Unemployment. Neno la tatu employee. Employee. Neno la nne employer. Employer. Neno la tano employed. Employed. Neno la sita self employed. Self employed. Neno la saba unemployed. Unemployed. Na neno la mwisho ni employ. Employ. Niarudie tena maneno haya yote tulionayo. La kwanza employment, la pili unemployment, la tatu employee, la nne employer, la tano employed, la sita self employed, la saba unemployed na la nane employ. Tuanze moja kwa moja na mfano wa kwanza tulionao katika somo hili. Mfano wa kwanza example 1 huko hivi. These young men are looking for employment. These young men are looking for employment. Employment inamaanisha ajira. Employment ajira. Young men ni vijana wa kiume. Ni watu wa kiume ambao ni vijana. These inaweza kumaanisha hawa, hivi, hizi, haya na kadhalika. Lakini these young men inamaanisha hawa vijana ambao ni wa kiume, hawa vijana wanatafuta ajira. These young men are looking for employment. Hawa vijana wanatafuta ajira au vijana hawa wanatafuta ajira. These young men are looking for employment. Kwa hiyo tumeshaona maana ya neno moja hapo ambalo ni employment, ajira. Twende katika mfano wa pili ambapo tutaona maana ya neno lingine. Example 2. Mfano wa pili, youth unemployment is one of the biggest problems nowadays. Youth unemployment is one of the biggest problems nowadays. Unemployment inamaanisha ukosefu wa ajira. Youth unemployment ni ukosefu wa ajira kwa vijana. Ukosefu wa ajira kwa vijana youth unemployment. One of the biggest problems, one of the biggest problems inamaanisha moja kati ya matatizo makubwa kabisa. Moja kati ya matatizo makubwa kabisa au moja kati ya matatizo makubwa kuliko yote. One of the biggest problems nowadays siku hizi. Kwa hiyo mwanzo mpaka mwisho sentence ina kuwa youth unemployment is one of the biggest problems nowadays ambayo inamaanisha ukosefu wa ajira ni moja kati ya matatizo makubwa kabisa siku hizi. Ukosefu wa ajira kwa vijana, youth unemployment, ukosefu wa ajira kwa vijana ni moja kati ya matatizo makubwa kabisa siku hizi. Twende katika mfano wetu wa tatu. Tayari tumeshaona maana ya neno la pili unemployment ukosefu wa ajira. Twende katika mfano tatu example 3. All employees should have insurance. All employees should have insurance. Employee inamaanisha mwajiriwa, mtu aliyeajiriwa. Wengine kwa Kiswahili kingine wanasema mfanyakazi, lakini kwa namna ya kuajiriwa. Employees ni wingi wa employee. Kwa hiyo employees waajiriwa. All employees waajiriwa wote au watu wote walioajiriwa. All employees should have insurance. Ambayo inamaanisha watu wote walioajiriwa au waajiriwa wote wanapaswa kuwa na bima au wanatakiwa kuwa na bima. Na namna nyingine pia kusema sentence hii sana kusema waajiriwa wote au watu wote walioajiriwa hupaswa au hutakiwa kuwa na bima. Watu wote walioajiriwa hupaswa au hutakiwa kuwa na bima. All employees should have insurance. Tumeshaona maana ya hilo neno employees. Twende katika mfano mwingine ambao utatupa maana ya ya neno lingine ambalo ni hili hapa. Hapa mfano namba 4 unatakiwa kuwa na employer. Kwa hiyo hii hii hi inatakiwa isiwepo. Kunatakiwa iwe R mwisho kama hapa employer badala ya employee. 
Kwa hiyo nitasoma employer badala ya employee. Number 4. I love my job and my employer. I love my job and my employer. I love my job and my employer. Hapa employer ni yule anayetoa ajira. Mwajiri. Yule anayeajiri ndio employer. Mwanzo paka mwisho. I love my job and my employer inamaanisha ninaipenda kazi yangu na mwajiri wangu. Ninapenda kazi yangu na mwajiri wangu. I love my job and my employer. Twende katika sehemu ya pili ya huu mfano ambayo inasomeka hivi. Agriculture is the largest employer in this country. Agriculture is the largest employer in this country. Inamaanisha kilimo ni mwajiri mkubwa kabisa au ni mwajiri mkubwa kuliko wote katika nchi hii au ndani ya nchi hii agriculture is the largest employer in this country kilimo ndicho mwajiri mkubwa kabisa kuliko wajiri wote ndani ya nchi hii au kwa ufupi tu kilimo ndicho mwajiri mkubwa zaidi au ndi, zaidi ya wote au kuliko wote katika nchi hii ambao kwa namna nyingine inamaanisha kwamba kilimo kinaajiri watu wengi kuliko sekta nyingine yoyote katika nchi hii agriculture is the largest employer in this country kuweza katumika kuonyesha employer kama mtu lakini pia katumika kuonyesha employer kama sekta yani sekta ambayo inaajiri na yenyewe inachukuliwa kama mwajiri kwenye kundi la wajiri, kwenye kundi la employer. Kwa hiyo hapo unaweza kubadilisha agriculture ukaweka sekta nyingine yoyote. Ambapo unaweza kaiweka hapa. Ambapo kwa mfano unaweza kusema mining is the largest employer in this country. Mbona maanaisha uchimbaji madini ni mwajiri mkubwa kuliko wote katika nchi hii. Na sekta nyingine zozote kulingana na nchi yako mwajiri mkuu ni sekta gani? Twende katika mfano mwingine ambao ni mfano tano example 5 Example 5 ina haya yafuatayo I am not employed I am not employed I am self employed I am not employed I am self employed Employed inamaanisha aliyeajiriwa employed aliyeajiriwa Lakini self employed self employed aliyejiajiri self employed aliyejiajiri ambapo sasa self employment inakuwa ni ajira binafsi yani ajira ya kujiajiri mwenyewe self employment tukienda kwenye makundi yale ya employment unemployment lakini pia self unemployed eh, self employment inakuwa ni kujiajiri wewe mwenyewe kwa mwanzo mpaka mwisho sentence hii itasomeka hivi I am not employed, I am self employed. Na maana yake ni mimi sijaajiriwa, nimejiajiri. Mimi sijaajiriwa, nimejiajiri. I am not employed, I am self employed. Twende katika kipengele cha pili sasa cha mfano wa tano. Sehemu ya pili ya mfano namba tano. kuna sentence hapa. This tax must be paid by the employed. This tax must be paid by the employed. Haya maneno mawili, the employed inamaanisha kundi la watu wote wenye ajira au kwa namna nyingine watu wote wenye kazi, the employed waliojiriwa. Mwanzo mpaka mwisho, this tax must be paid by the employed inamaanisha kodi hii lazima ilipwe na walioajiriwa. Kodi hii lazima ilipwe na walioajiriwa wengine waseme kodi hii wanasema hii kodi kwa hiyo pia unaweza kusema hii kodi lazima ilipwe na walioajiriwa nadhani kwa yule ambaye amekuwa mfuatiliaji mzuri wa masomo ya passive voice basi hapa kwenye must be paid hautashangaa ni kwa nini nimesema lazima ilipwe nadhani utakuwa naelewa mpangilio wa sentence katika kauli ya kutenda na kauli ya kutendwa kama umepitia masomo yaliyopita kwa makini kwa upande wa mfululizo wa masomo ya passive voice yani kauli ya kutendo. Twende moja kwa moja katika mfano namba sita. example 6. Mfano wetu wa sita ni huu hapa. Na una haya yafuatayo. Example 6. My friend is unemployed. 
my friend is unemployed my friend is unemployed ina maanisha rafiki yangu hajaajiriwa employed ajiriwa unemployed kuto ajiriwa au kuto kuwa umeajiriwa kwa namna nyingine ni kuto kuwa na kazi lakini ambayo inamaanisha kazi ile ya kuajiriwa inawezekana una kazi nyingine zozote lakini kama si ya kuajiriwa basi utahesabika ni unemployed na unaweza kuasa kwenye kundi la self employed kama umejiajiri my friend uh, my friend is unemployed rafiki yangu hajaajiriwa kwa Kiswahili kingine rafiki yangu hana kazi na sehemu ya pili ya huu mfano ni hii hapa this company provides financial services for the unemployed this company provides financial services for the unemployed the unemployed kama vile ilivyokuwa kwenye the employed ambao ni walioajiriwa au kundi la watu wote walioajiriwa the unemployed inakuwa ni kundi lote la watu ambao hawajaajiriwa kwa hiyo watu wote ambao hawajaajiriwa wataitwa kwa pamoja kama the unemployed mwanzo mpaka mwisho this company provides financial services for the unemployed kampuni hii hutoa huduma za kifedha financial services huduma za kifedha kwa hiyo kampuni hii hutoa huduma za, ki, za kifedha kwa watu ambao hawajaajiriwa au kwa wasioajiriwa kwa namna nyingine au kwa wale ambao hawajaajiriwa this company provides financial services for the unemployed kampuni hii hutoa huduma za kifedha kwa ambao hawajaajiriwa twende katika mfano wa saba example 7 ambayo ina sehemu mbili na zitakuwa ni sehemu za mwisho kwa somo hili number 7 how many people do you want to employ how many people do you want to employ to employ inamaanisha kuajiri kuajiri au kumpa mtu mwingine kazi akufanyie huku ukimlipa how many people do you want to employ inamaanisha unataka kuajiri watu wangapi kwa namna nyingine je ni watu wangapi unataka kuajiri wengine pia wanasema ni watu wangapi unataka kuajiri kwa Kiswahili kingine unataka kuajiri watu wangapi how many people do you want to employ majibu yanaweza kuwa tofauti tofauti kulingana na idadi ya watu unaotaka kuajiri au kama hautaki kuajiri mtu yoyote unaweza kusema kwa mfano i don't want to employ anybody au i don't want to employ any person i don't want to employ anyone sitaki kumwajiri mtu yoyote i don't want to employ anyone au i don't want to employ anybody au i don't want to employ any person lakini pia unaweza kusema i want to employ five people nataka kuajiri watu watano i want to employ so many people ninataka kuajiri watu wengi sana i want to employ hundreds of people hundreds of people inamaanisha mamia ya watu i want to employ hundreds of people kama unataka kuajiri mamia ya watu ambao hautaki kuwataja idadi ni mia ngapi lakini pia kama unataka kuajiri maelfu ya watu unaweza kusema i want to employ thousands of people i want to employ thousands of people nataka kuajiri maelfu ya watu lakini kama unataka kutaja idadi halisi au idadi kamili ya elfu ngapi unaweza kusema kwa mfano i want to employ 3000 people nataka kuajiri watu elfu tatu na kadhalika twende katika sehemu ya pili ya mfano huu ambayo itakuwa inamalizia somo hili ambayo inasomeka hivi this company employs email marketing to reach customers this company employs email marketing to reach customers ambapo ili neno employ lina maana nyingine ambayo ni kutumia kanto tofauti na kuajiri to employ kuajiri lakini pia kutumia japo inakuwa ni ile maana ya msingi inabaki pale pale unapokitumia kitu maana kile kitu umekiajiri kikutimizie lengo fulani kwa hiyo this company employs email marketing to reach customers ina maana ambayo nitaitoa baada ya kusema maana ya haya maneno mawili email marketing marketing ni utafutaji wa masoko yani ni kuzipeleka bidhaa sokoni ili ziwafikie wateja kwa ajili ya ku ya kununua 
lakini email marketing ni ufikishaji wa bidhaa sokoni kwa njia ya email ambayo kwa Kiswahili ni barua pepe. Kwa hiyo email marketing ni upelekaji wa bidhaa sokoni kwa njia ya barua pepe. Maana unatumia barua pepe au email kuzitangaza bidhaa kwa wateja. Kwa hiyo mwanzo paka mwisho this company employs email marketing to reach customers inamaanisha kampuni hii hutumia utafutaji wa masoko au upelekaji wa bidhaa sokoni kwa njia ya barua pepe kufikia wateja to reach customers ni kufikia wateja to reach customers kampuni hii hutumia utafutaji wa masoko au tumie upelekaji wa bidhaa sokoni kwa njia ya barua pepe kufikia wateja au kuwafikia wateja na baada ya kuwa nimetoa ufafanuzi huu wote wa Kiswahili kutoka kwenye sentensi za Kiingereza na kusema maana ya kila neno ambalo limelengwa katika somo hili basi nirudi tena mwanzo nisome sentensi zote kwa Kiingereza tu ili kusaidia kuona kama unaweza kuwa unakumbuka maneno yote ambayo nimeyasema na maana yake na pia kukumbuka maana ya sentensi nzima ambazo ziko katika mifano hii tulioiona na ikiwa kuna mahali ya ukumbuki basi ujue wapi unatakiwa ufanye bidii ufanye marudio kwa bidii zaidi nianze na namba moja. number one. these young men are looking for employment Number two, youth unemployment is one of the biggest problems nowadays. Number three, all employees should have insurance. Number four, I love my job and my employer. Number four, part two, agriculture is the largest employer in this country. Number five, I am not employed, I am self-employed. Number five, part two, this tax must be paid by the employed. Number six, my friend is unemployed. Part two, number six, this company provides financial services for the unemployed. Number seven, how many people do you want to employ? Number seven, part two, this company employs email marketing to reach customers. Ikiwa unataji upata sumo lingine lolo katika mfuwizo wa masumo ya kingereza cha kuongea, utenda YouTube semi ya kutafuta video, kisha utandika kumfano sumo la kwanza kingereza cha kuongea, ikiwa unatafuta somo la kwanza lakini kumfano kama unataka somo la kumi, utandika somo la kumi kingereza cha kuongea, na kathalika kota kuna badalisha ili namba ya somo tu lakini maneno yote unatumia hayo hayo ili kupata somo tofauti.